If you're wondering what happened to the recession that was supposed to happen this year, well, we might have the answer for you. Welcome to Wealthion. I'm Wealthion founder Adam Taggart here with a brief explainer video for you on the topic of stealth liquidity. This topic's important because it helps explain why 2023 is unfolding to the confusion of many analysts to be the year of the recession that wasn't. Heading into this year from the unrelenting beating for stocks and bonds that was 2022, the vast majority of economic forecasters predicted a recession was near certain to arrive in the first quarter or two. The Fed had turned off the monetary stimulus spigots and was now pursuing interest rate hikes and quantitative tightening with an aggression rarely seen before in history. The fast rise in cost of capital, plus elevated input costs and higher wages from raging inflation, were squeezing corporate profits. Layoffs surged. Corporate bankruptcies started spiking to levels not seen since 2010. And then the banking system started stumbling, seeing more U.S. bank failures as measured by market cap than the global financial crisis, forcing banks to tighten lending standards. And on top of that, the U.S. government faced a debt ceiling showdown, which required the U.S. Treasury to drain its general account to keep government operations funded until a deal was struck which would then suck out over a trillion dollars worth of capital out of the economy as new treasury bonds got sold to refill the TGA's coffers. And on top of that, the Fed's higher interest rates caused a surge in interest expense on the federal debt, now passing over $1 trillion for the fiscal year. All of these factors made a compelling, practically overwhelming case for reduced systemic liquidity in 2023. For well over a decade, the markets and the economy had become dependent on the Federal Reserve's trillions of dollars worth of QE and rock bottom interest rates. And then during the pandemic, a series of new fiscal stimulus packages and forbearance programs added to that addiction. Without those, the thinking went, the economy would surely contract in 2023, companies would lay off workers in larger numbers, and the financial and housing markets would correct materially. But something funny happened on the road to this widely expected recession. The recession forgot to show up. The U.S. economy has chugged along at about a 2% GDP growth rate and the stock market caught fire, bottoming in October and is now flirting with all-time highs here in early August. Unemployment's remained near 3.5%. Inflation, as measured by CPI, has come down substantially, and home prices are only off about 1% nationally versus a year ago. What happened? How were so many forecasters, including, including many of those appearing on this channel over the past years, myself included, so mistaken about the odds for recession? Well, the answer may lie in an article that recently appeared on Zero Hedge discussing stealth liquidity. Simply put, on the fiscal side, the U.S. is running such a stunningly high deficit that it's goosing the economic cycle. In other words, while the Fed and the banking system are busy pressing on the economy's brakes, the administration is stomping hard on the accelerator. And at a current excess of $1 trillion over last year's deficit, that extra gas is keeping things propped up for the time being. Morgan Stanley's chief strategist, Mike Wilson, who called very publicly for a 2023 recession, is citing this excess fiscal spending as a main reason his prediction hasn't manifested yet. In a recent note, Wilson wrote, Part of the reason we found ourselves offside this year is that the fiscal impulse returned with a vengeance and remained quite strong in 2023, something we didn't factor into our forecasts. In fact, we've rarely ever seen such large deficits when the unemployment rate is so low. And he's right. As this chart shows, you can see that very rarely in the past 50 years, almost never in fact, has the nation run a deficit anywhere near as great of a percent of GDP when the unemployment rate has been this low. In essence, we're running a wartime deficit in a peacetime economy. You can't do that for long without real complications, a resurgence of inflation being just one major risk. Wilson himself asks, if fiscal policy is showing such little constraint in good times, what happens to the deficit when the next recession arrives? 
Look, skeptics think this is this reckless deficit spending is a ploy of the administrations to keep the economy, the jobs market and asset prices elevated through the coming election. I'll leave it to the political analyst to determine if that's truly the case or not. But whatever the reason, we are all currently living in a dangerous experiment. For how much longer can such profligate deficits continue before unleashing a reckoning far more damaging to the economy than the sugar rush it's enjoying right now? And once the deficits reined in, either by choice or by blowback, what will come next? Here's what Mike Wilson thinks. He says, quote, this should start to call into question equity valuations, which were already high before the recent rise in yields. Furthermore, if fiscal spending must be curtailed due to higher political or funding costs, the unfinished earnings decline that began last year is more likely to resume as we continue to forecast. In other words, the artificially delayed recession will arrive, except it will be bigger and angrier. So will all that indeed happen next from here? Yeah, no one knows for sure, but it's certainly a cogent argument to consider in your investment planning. That's why we encourage the regular investor to work under the guidance of a good seasoned professional advisor who takes into account the macro risks discussed in this video. If you've already got a good one, you're very fortunate you should stick with them. But if not, or if you'd like a second opinion from one who does, consider scheduling a free consultation with the financial advisors endorsed by Wealthion. To do that, just fill out the short form at Wealthion.com. All right, well, look, it's been longer than I'd like since I've released an explainer video like this. We're just so busy here these days producing videos that I rarely have the bandwidth to write and produce these kind of summaries. But if you value them, let me know in the comments section below. And if demand is strong enough, I'll see what I can do about freeing up more of my time or bringing in someone who can help me do more of these. And also, if you like this video, please support this channel by hitting the like button and then clicking on the red subscribe button below as well as that little bell icon right next to it. Thanks for doing that, and thanks so much for watching.